Okay, problem number one, uh, Jeff, that we're going to have is a very simple problem. This is probably even with his Oliver. Again, apologize for my bad handwriting. If you can write worse than me, probably you'll be a doctor, right? Have you ever gotten something written from a doctor and tried to read it? Probably worse. Okay, or mine worse. <laughs> Okay, here's the deal. I do have a theater in a gutter that's a green in the top with a fuse disconnect feeding that gutter. From the gutter, I have a combination starter, a disconnect, a fuse, um, a contactor, an overload that feeds two motors. And your job, Andrew, my friend, is to size the system. If you have 100 motors, will be the same as the same calculation. This is the reason why we pick on this one, guys. We went over it in the lecture. And um, we we'll go over it over and over because that's every 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 building that you get into, you have a lot of machines that you need to size for them. A lot of equipment. Okay. This is the given. The given is the system is 480, the full load amp of um, the 480 system, 60 horsepower 75, full load amp 75, full load amp 90. Temperature rise when the first one is 50, the second one does not have temperature rise, it has a service factor. 115. The first letter for the first one is L, for the second one is M. And my job and yours is to size the following. We need first to size the branch circuit. If you see number one, branch circuit. Number two, the disconnect. Number three, the over temperature device. Number four, the contactor, the controller. Number um, and uh, number four. And number five that we need to do is the overload protection device. Then we need to go to the feeder and size the over temperature device for the feeder as well as the feeder conductor. Sorry, number five is over. So number one, two, three, four, and five guys will be repeated for the full motors, right? Can you guys see that? And number seven and six is for the whole feeder. Any question about what's given? Everything is three pins. Does that make sense what's given? You guys have a picture of this, so you don't have to draw that. Anything I need to read out of my mess here? The second page is going to be a mess. So what I, we're going to do a we're going to do a table, yeah. Like we have done these all the time. We're going to do a table for this. Any question about the given first? Uh, temperature rise, yes. Temperature rise. When we size the overload protection device, uh, we care about temperature rise and surface factor. That's the reason why you guys have it. Obviously, this is going to be printed, so it'll be easier to read. And do I find anything I need to read from that? Okay. All right, so I need to size this one. Now this is where the mess is going to happen. Um, so what, what we need to do for this, guys, to make it clearer for all of us, what, what I need to do is I need to size all this and put them in one single table. You don't have to put them in a table. You can pull off with them without the table. Let me just explain if you do the table. Okay, so this is the easiest way to do motors, guys, is to have motor one, motor two, the two columns, and these are the reference code. Um, you can write them or you can refer to the lecture, guys, that we did. They're all identical. So they are identical. On the test, I, unless I ask you for the references, I don't want the references. I assume you guys know the references. These are all my references, code references. The last column. Then the first column, guys, is um, I have I need number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and the short circuit for each one of these motors. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? If you want make a, give you a few seconds to draw a table, I can read any of my beautiful uh, handwriting. The first number one, starting from here, guys. Number one is a bright circuit. The first number one is a branch circuit. Number two is a disconnect. Number three is overcurrent protection device, OCPD, non-time delay fuse. I want a non-time delay fuse. Number four is controller. Number five is overload. And number not number six, but the last one doesn't have a number. Can you see it way at the bottom? This is stopping current. I'm asking you to find the stopping current. Any comments, any questions? All the references are here. 
We went over this. I remind you guys, it's PD up on the network tool. That's why I don't feel the kind of a, um, I don't need to go to all these tables and all these references. As we move forward, Kerry, you're going to see that this becomes second nature to you, going to all these tables and all these references. Anybody wants me to read my beautiful handwriting on the last column here? Please, you guys have in the lecture, it's feeding up to the network too. All of them are there, you were here, the ones who were here. Uh, I don't know, Jim, if you missed that one, no, you were here. It's also in the PDF of the network. That's why it's uh, I can't remember, but I'll, I'll let you know. It's, it should see, it should be marked like motors and HVAC equipment. Okay. Any questions guys before I go ahead and start? Any questions before I go ahead and start? Oh, the next slide, the next slide will do the feeder. The next slide will do the feeder. This is just doing the motors. Here's what next slide is going to be. My next slide, guys, I'm going to do the feeder. Okay? So we're just concerned right now about just the motor. Um, and well, the ones related, only the ones related to the feeder. Cool? Let me know if you guys want me to start. I can wait if you. Got him? Okay. No new uneasy code references from what we did in the lecture. Okay. Uh, what color do you guys like to pick the, the easiest one to black, red? Red? Okay, so let's go red. So the first thing I have guys for you, I would I would like to do the full load current for that is equal to. That's from 430 to 250. I did that one for you, but you guys will be doing it for yourself. 77 caps, this guy, and 96. So when it comes to motor calculation, we don't trust the manufacturers. Well, we do, but we typically go to the NDC code book and we use the um, full load current from the NDC code book. You guys are familiar with the with table 430 not 230. Then, for, if I go too fast, because we're reviewing, please stop me at any time. Cool. So then we do the short circuit. If you guys go to 430.22 and table 310, this should be 310.16. This particular one. Remember the cheese that matters. Uh, 310.15 and 16 That's the only difference here. Right? Um, if you go to these, you can size the brand circuit. So let's go size the brand circuit. The first thing you take do is 1.25. Multiply this by 77. And that will get you a healthy 96 amps. And uh, if you go to table 310.15 16 since I'm, I have three tables, so three motors, the size is number uh, three A W G T H H N. Done. Piece of cake. If you go to the second one, guys, one one point two five multiplied by ninety six, that will get you a healthy one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty amp. Same thing. If you go to the same table, will get you three conductors, number. And three conductors number, uh, what's number check? Number one, A, W, G, G, H, H, N. H, H, N. Now I'm pissed. Uh, Adam, my friend, could you please write it exactly like this? If you put number three, I will not give you full credit. Did you guys hear me? If you put just number three, I need how many? Number three, you guys, is for babies. Now, move on, and you, you work for a company. If you, when you go size a conduit, you see a number three. Well, how many number three are going to put this conduit? The number of the conductor becomes as important as the conductor size. When you press the right turn, so I want you to get into the habit. When you draw a feeder, you're going to draw how many conductors? And what size and what insulation? Very, very important. Okay. <laughs> this for Any question that's straightforward? Carry my friend. I think it's straightforward, right? <clears throat> okay, let's go to the disconnect. If you guys put, put if you put table four thirty dot one one zero, it tells you you have to multiply it by one fifteen. That is equal. So this is what you do. One point one five multiply this one by okay, seventy seven. That will get you um eighty nine eighty nine amps and your disconnect is going to be hundred amps. That's my disconnect size. It's hundred amps. Um, for the second one, 1.15, oops, oh, 
um, 1.15 multiplied by 96 equal, um, I came up with um, 110M, the next standard is 200. Everybody knows where we got the next standards. We got the next standard from DeWalt 3-12. Everybody got DeWalt? DeWalt 3-12. It's not enough guys to size up. When you size a disconnect, we need an industry, actual industry standard. So you can go by and call Vikings, Raybar, uh, where an electrical fly that disconnect. Adam, does it make sense? Okay, it's okay. So that's my disconnect. Anybody can tell me how many poles, how many faces this disconnect is going to have? It's a three phase. Three pole. So it's going to be a three pole, three phase disconnect 480. Why 480? Because the system is 480. So it's typically be 600. Okay, number three, over current protection device. I am, I single-handedly decided to use none time to make use, none time to make use, none time to make use. Okay, because when, when it comes to over current protection device, you have to decide what time you will use. I single-handedly use none time to make use. Cool. If you guys go to table 430.52, it will tell you for none time to make use. Anybody remember the multiplier? Is it 175 or 300? 300. So you're going to go through the 300. Basically, so take me, multiply it by 77, and that will get you, my friend, uh, 231. 231, if I know how to read my writing. The next standard is 250F. Uh, you go to the second one, same thing. Me times uh, 96. That will get me a healthy 3 times 288. Um, 288. Um, and if you go to the next standard, that will be, it can be 300 now. Oh, which is 300 now. So I want to give an attempt to, to draw that one. Ouch. 300 now. Everybody knows that guy's 300 now before you don't ask me to raise that line. Right. Oh, Ouch. Is it? Thank you. For, for moral support. <laughs> okay, and when did we get the standards, guys? 240.6, remember that? 240.6. That's the standard non adjustable circuit breakers. And then these are the maximum. Controller. When it comes to the controller, guys, this is what, what you need to do. This is a 60 horsepower, uh, so it's a 60 horsepower at 480 volt. And if you go to DeWalt 6-4, it will give you an EMA, EMA, EMA number 4, or EMA 4. Um, and the same thing, this guy is a 75 horsepower at 480 volts. So we'll sign the controller based on the voltage and the horsepower. And if you do that one, this will give you an EMA size, EMA number uh, I have number four. Both of them are number four. Even number four. So make sure you know how to use this table, the, the wall six dash four. We'll use it before. I make sure you pay attention to the phases, three phases. Number one, the number of phases is it three phases or seven phases? The voltage and the horsepower. And if you go, if, it, if you don't find 750, you go to the next end. That means 75. Overload. I want to remind you guys. For the first motor, there was a temperature rise of what? <clears throat> the temperature rise was 50. So if the temperature rise is 50, then it's not less than 40. It's so a new multiplier is 115, right? So for the first one is 1.15 times, except you use the nameplate here. And instead of so you're using the nameplate for the overload, the nameplate is 75. 75, that's why we use the name player. And if you guys do that, you end up with 86, 86 amps. And what's the sitting? 86 amps. So then 86 amps is the overload size. You don't go up, you don't go down. The second one, guys, was a service factor 115. If you looked at it, it was a service factor 115. Since the 115 service factor, the coolest is you can go up to 125. So it's okay, so you take 1.25, multiply it by the same thing, the name thing. Can you guys see that blue thing? I'm working full to emphasize it. Um, this one is uh, 90. 
19, right? 10 to the 19, and then that will get you 113, 113, and so 113M is the overload. Did I do anything wrong, Jeff? The surface factor is 115 and the temperature is. Okay. And if one of them applies, we'll apply the 120 part. Okay. Next. Short circuit calculation. I short circuit. So down here. So down. Okay. When we'll find the I short circuit calculation. Oh, the starting, I'm sorry. The starting current. Some, one of us did not get his milk. That's Mr. Curry. Yeah, the, um, did they say short circuit here? Stop. No, no, it is stop. It's very good. You said short circuit. I said short circuit. The starting current or the lock torture current, guys. I will remind you, Jeff, I gave you a code letter L and a code letter M. If you put the cable 430.70B, that's where you find the multiplier. So let's go do it. So I, the current here, the starting current is going to be 9.99. This is for multiplier L, multiplied by 60, multiplied by uh, 1,000, divide everything, my friend, by 1.73 times the multiplier. If you do this, you will end up with what? Uh, 722. I'm writing here 722. That should be the answer for this. We're going to get the 9.99. That's directly from the table for a code letter L. For a code letter M, guys, same thing. You're going to have I. It's going to equal <coughs> one one point. Oops. So we have 11.19 one, one multiplied this baby by uh, by 75, 75 multiplied by a thousand, divide everything, oh, divide everything by 1.73 times 480. And you can do the math on this, you're going to end up with 10, 11, and somebody two. 10, 11, check that one for you, yeah. You're going to end up with 10, 11 amps. I have 10, 11. Any comments, guys, any questions? That's your starting current. 11.99, that's for code letter M from 430.7B. The upper limit. So the animal you go here, you're gonna find two limits, lower and upper. Which one is the worst scenario? Upper. If you cover the upper, the lower will be covered. That's what always will take the worst scenario. Any comments, guys? Any questions?
So we've done that one. Next is the feeder here. So let's go to the feeder over competition device. That's piece of gear. And this equals what series you did the largest over competition device, which is the 300, plus the full load current, 77. And then uh, add them up, 377. If it's not a standard, you go down. That's all from 450 to 62. And the next standard down is 350M. The feeder conductor piece of cake, you guys have done that before. You take the 1.25 multiplied by the largest, fattest, bumpiest motor plus 77. And that will equal 197M. And if you go to table 310.15b16.9, change your name. Table 310.15b16. Do you remember that? Your, um, your, um, so that's step one. Step two is going to get you three conductors. Riot, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. Done. T, H, H, N. Piece of cake. That's problem number one. Problem number two. I'm going to that little bit to I'm going over that to and two lectures. So I'm going fast through because it's review. And Jeff, I know you've heard it many times. I promise you this will be the last time you're going to hear from your friend Jeff about motors. Unless you want you flunk and you come back and see That's an option too. Ouch. Not really, Jeff. Not funny, huh? Shall we? This will be PDF also on the network. Brian, my friend. Here's another example. You, that's problem number two in your sheet. Uh, did you get a sheet, uh, Ryan? Oh. Um, okay. So here is the this scenario. This scenario is really cool. The same thing, uh, Darren, my friend, and Andrew, except these are HVAC equipment. Rooftop units, AC units, compressors. These are the, in this case, they're AC units. <coughs> Three phase AC units, full stop units. <coughs> Let me go over what they are. I have AC unit one, AC unit two, could be a chiller, compressor, rooftop unit. The full load amp is 75 amp. The locked rotor current is 400 for the first one, the second one, 600. Locked rotor current is 360. The locked rotor current is the start current, guys. They're all three phase, the voltage that I'm burning in mass is 480. These are all given. What I need to find first, the feeder that feeds each one of them, the overcapitation device, and the disconnect. Then I need to go also find the feeder that feeds each one of them, the disconnect for all of them, and the overcapitation device. The only thing that's missing is two there. Anybody recognize what was missing from this? Controller and overload. We can do the control on all the motors. The only thing that we missed them because 99% oh, of the time, guys, the controller and the overload is specified by who? The manufacturer, the equipment. So we really just provide this fuse disconnect for them. So that's why it's all what you're providing here is just a fuse disconnect. A fuse disconnect. Any question about the given? You guys have this one sheet in front of you. So shall we go? All right, let's do that. Okay, now this is also another mess that I would like you. We're going to do the same thing. Oh, there you are. No? Okay, thanks. 
Um, okay, so let's take me. Okay, so take these. Sorry. So let's take these all the way here. Same thing, guys. Here's my AC unit one, AC unit two. My AC unit one, AC. Ouch. I hit it when it starts flashing at the end. This is my AC one. AC2 with the top. And what I need to do the following, guys. Here's all the references. I need to find one, and I need to find two, three, I have some calculation for it, and four. Very easy, very simple. You're going to follow up with your friend. Again, we did this one. This is review. So let's go ahead and do the first thing. So I need to find that the first thing, guys, number one is branch circuit. Number one is the branch circuit, the conductors. The way that you do the conductor is no different than uh, you put the 440, look at this, 440 this time, not 430, not 32, and then don't forget to go to the table that I'm going to change there. 32, this is dot 32, and this is table 310.15 and G16. Really no difference. And uh, we need this. My this one is that. This will be 4, 4, 4, 0, 22. Um, and uh, 2, 4, dot 6. Okay, so these are your references. We want to go for, guys. All right, so piece of cake. We take the 1.5, 1.25, multiplied by the full load current, which is 75. And that will give you, gentlemen, don't forget that you need uh, some divider here. We'll give you 94, 94 amp. And from this, you can go three conductors. Number three, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. That's a big lit. You use, they call it minimum circuit density, guys. That's how you calculate it. But for real load amps on the name plate, everything name plate. Second one. 1.25 multiply this one by name 60 I have. 60, we can come up with 75 amps. And that will give you three conductors. Number four, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. 75. 75 looks like that. Oh, my 75. 25 Okay, so that's my uh, conductor, piece of cake. Exactly the same thing like any other conductor. Second one, overcompiction device. Overcompiction device, guys. What I'm going to do for overcompiction device is if you go to uh, 440.22, it says, I need somebody to help me with this. It says you have to multiply by 1.75. If it doesn't start, then you go to 25. I used to go to 25 from the get-go, but because of safety, everybody's about safety now. Always do 1.75 because the, unless you know otherwise, unless you understand the stuff. So I'm going to use I need somebody to help me though. 1.75 multiplied by I don't know what I did. The example with you, I think I used 1.75. The two the two is the very this one. And, and, Number one is you know that it's not, the motor is not going to start, so the coil allows you to go up to 225, or from the heat door, go to 1.75. So if it doesn't start there, you can up it. So I'm going to assume it's going to start based on the overcompetition device, you need 1.75. That's what I want you guys to do with this. So 1.75 multiplied by 1. 1.75. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 131.25.25.3. Okay. What's the next standard? Do I have one fifty? Do I have one to do? Huh? Do I have one before one fifty? Should be one fifty. Right? Can somebody check on that one? Do we have anything? I think it's one fifty is the standard. Darling from us, huh? Okay, 150. Piece of cake, same thing here, guys. 1.75 multiply this by 
um, 60, you end up with um, you end up with 135. 135, 135 a.m. I apologize, you have to go down. ICC apologies. You can't go up, you have to go down here. So that should be 125, 125 a.m. You have to go down with these guys. You go down in both of them. If you read the code, you go down in both of them. Because it doesn't allow you to go up. It's going to be 105. Yeah, I was going to say, how are you the bigger number from that 60 to 75? Here, 135 for PC2 is going to be 105. This one? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I was looking at it from a, Okay, what is it? 105? 105 now. Thank you. What would that give me? 100. Can you guess what? Why you go down on each other and on these? If you go to. Um, and if you go to 440.22, read it, it doesn't tell you to go up. So what are you going to do? Remember the three options I gave you guys with the bar get drunk and get mad? Yeah. Give one uh, arm and leg to bus fund, they'll make you one, or go down. Okay, so that's my, um, my connection here. So that I'm sorry. And, um, did they do it the last time? Two twenty-five. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we go now. Okay. So disconnect. The disconnect, guys, is very easy. When it comes to the disconnect, you have to have and rating, and you have to have both for rating. For the disconnect, I want you to do two calculations. And rating and post for rating. The AMP rating is piece of cake. Here's what you do know the AMP rating. You take 1.15 multiplied by 75, and that will get you 86, 86 amps. What's the standard after that? 100 amps. Same thing for this guy 1.15 multiplied this baby by 60, and that will get me 69. Is that true? 69 amps, and that will give me 100 amps again. Check my numbers, will you? That's uh, going to the wall three twelve. yep. Okay, now this is the amp size. The second thing that you're going to need to do for the motors is the horsepower sizing. This connect has to have two sizes, horsepower and amp. Okay, for the horsepower size, Piece of cake. You're going to go for the so disconnect full load from the full load. Here's what you you want to do from for 75 uh, horsepower. That will get you, my friend. I'm sorry for um. Let me find the full load term. So for 75 amp, this should get you a horsepower of 60 horsepower. And and for this guy, it was 60 amp. That should get you, um, for 60 amp, should get you 50 horsepower. So what am I doing? You go to 430.250, guys, and you look at the full load amp, and you're cross-referencing it with the, with, with the horsepower. Cool? So you take the full load amp, and cross, instead of finding the full load amp for a horsepower, now you're finding the horsepower for a full load amp. So that's my first horsepower rating. The second horsepower rating, my friend, is locked rotor current. The first one, locked rotor current, is 400 amps. You take this one to a different cable, 430.251B. This will get you a horsepower of 60, 60 horsepower. This guy, the same thing, you will take this was 360, 360. Take it to the same table that will get you a 50 horsepower. Okay? So, you do the calculation. One based on 430.251, one based on 430.250. And guess which one we're going to use? Anybody can guess? They happen to be the same here. But if they were different, which one would you use? The largest. So I'm going to go highlight, happen to be the same. So here's the size. So my 
Uh, this product is going to be 100 amp and um, 100 amp, 60 horsepower, 480 disconnect. The only confusing part is here. Everybody understand what we did? Based on the whole load amp, you find a horsepower. Based on the last total current, you find a horsepower. And then you compare the two together, 60, 60, 50, 50, you choose the largest. In this case, we hit the jackpot. They're all the same, so we don't have to choose it. Feeder. The feeder. The feeder, guys, uh, feeder over temperature device, that's a piece of kit. The code says you take 150. The over condition device, and plus the full load current of the other baby, which is 60. Feeder over condition device. The fuse. One twenty-five. Sorry. One twenty-five amp. No recognition device. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's coming from the. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One twenty-five. Yeah. Thanks. That's based on the other the other calculation that you used. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Sixty. I need somebody to help me with this. So that would give me two ten. Right? Oh no, not two ten. We're ten. One ninety. I'm looking with the other. One uh, eighty-five. Right? 185. Then you go you go down again. What's the number of plus 185? 60 is the whole of the current, the name plate. The name plate. The name plate. So then you, you get, did I do it right? Right? On 180, there's no going down from 185 is. So that will get you 175. Is there one? I'm sure it's 175. Yeah, 175 sounds very good. Why are we using the name plate for the AC2? Huh? Why are we using the name plate for the AC2? Because that's what uh, the ADC code will tell you. So you think the AC2? 440.22 V1. So you're thinking the AC2 should be AC2 and then some more. Almost. the other one. Optimal. Here's the references for them 240 guys and 440.22p. Okay, so that's your uh, size of feeder. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments, my friend? This will be uh, 185. This will be 175. Okay, so let me finish this one. Then I'll give you a quick break, guys. Can I move on when you guys are ready? I need to do a little bit about the feeder. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and size five feeder disconnect amps, five horsepower, and six is a feeder. So this is how we're going to do size here. This is all for the feeder, all for the feeder. So five feeder disconnected amps. Here's what the code says to your feeder disconnected amps. First of all, that's a disconnect that's going to disconnect the whole feeder, not just one motor. So um, for a whole feeder, guys, here's what the second code says. And this is 440.12b and what? 1.15 multiplied by, look at the brackets. Very important, 75 plus 60. You, you add them up and then you multiply them. End up with 155 m. And then your next disconnect is 200 m. Um, Andrew, my friend, you add them up and you multiply them by 115. That's what the code says. You add them up. Remember that disconnect is disconnecting the two. Okay. <clears throat> then, so that's basically the amp size of the disconnect. Number five is either disconnect amp. This is amp. Either disconnect amp. The second thing, guys, is either disconnect horsepower. He's okay. Here's how they do it. They take the full load current of the two of them, 75 plus 60, and that will get you 135 amp. Then you take 135 amp to this table, 430.250, and that will get you a horsepower of 125 
um, horsepower. Okay? Then for the lock nuts or current guys, that's for the full loop. And the lock nuts or current, same thing. They take the atom up, add the two lock nuts or current, 360, that will get you uh, 760 amp. Then you take the 760 amp, you take it to this table, 430.251B, and that will get you 125 horsepower. So which one are we going to use? The largest. This happens to be the same. We choose, uh, we, we choose the largest of the two. See how they added the full load amps, guys, for the feeder to size the disconnect horsepower? They added the lock filter current for the feeder to find the size of the disconnect. The last thing, my friend, always, always, always. Remember, we're dealing with what? HVAC equipment, chillers, rooftop units, compressors. Right. All right. So last thing is number six, guys. Number six is the feeder. That's a piece of paper. I've done it before many times. <clears throat> the feeder is you take the largest, fastest, fluffiest motor, 1.2 volts. So you take uh, 1.25, multiply this baby by 75, 75 plus 60. Remember the brackets are here. So, and if you do that, you will end up with 154, 154 amp. And if you take the, then that will get you three conductors, number from table V10.16, uh, if you go there, 2R, 2R, A, W, G, 2R, T, H, H, N. So that's the size of the feeder that you're going to have for that building, for that system. Five minutes break, and we'll have two more, and then we're done. Any comments, guys? Any questions? This will be PDF. Huh? Uh, no, there's two more calculation questions. Yeah, I'm going to go over them. I just went over the two at the top. I'm going to go over the two at the bottom. They're much easier than the two at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Any question, guys? Should we have five minutes, uh, Darren, a little bit? Stretch yourself. Okay, boys and girls and friends. All right, we got that one. Let's go to the last two, my friends. Last two. Thank you, my friends. Okay, here's what you have here. <laughs> and please pay a little bit of attention to this one, um, Kerry, because you guys need to size this for the riser, too. Your riser depends on the, lock, the coming, too. This is um, a UPS PDU deal. I have a UPS PDU deal. I have a 480 UPS, take the voltage in to put 668 DC, invert it to DC, then invert it back to AC, and dump it across the PDU. So here's my UPS, here's my PDU. And then from the PDU, you can go feed to it uh, computer loads. And we went through this one. Okay, what do we need to do? Here's what you need to know. Number one, I have a data center of 45 by 45 feet. You need to know that the dimension is 45 by 45. The power factor is 80 for this system. The losses, the losses are 10% losses. Um, so I have a 10% losses, so I need to accommodate for this. Um, and power density is 90, and the system is 480 system. I need to size, number one, the UPS. Number two, the over temperature device for the UPS. Number three, the feeder. Number four, my friend, is going to be the PDU. Number five, the over temperature device for the PDU. And number six, as the feeder for the PDU. Everybody's familiar with the PDU power distribution units and UPS uninterruptible power supply. <clears throat> the reason for data center, guys, to give you 
So we have a shutdown before the Jenkins 10 seconds to start. 10 seconds is an eternity in the financial world. So when you have, they have batteries here, if you were to lose power here, the batteries will give you 15, 20 minutes to either shut down your system safely or the generator will pick up the load and you continue to run forever, uninterrupted. That's what they use. So I need to size, <coughs> the only thing that interests me is sizing these, uh, these things for the PG. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? Okay. Huh? That's where your wife's money is going. <laughs> it's paying for it. And my wife's. When you go to Allianz here, you will see what we have. It's unreal. Things are humming. And you talk about, imagine Citibank, Bank of America. That's what you're talking about. Home people. Stay in. And the government, the state of Minnesota government, the U.S. government, all the branches of government, you were able to shut down because you lost power and lose the data. Uh, all this, the government branches, the military branches, you know, UPS is a big deal. Okay, so but everybody understand UPS, <coughs> BDUs. Okay, let's go size. Cut that one. <coughs> the power density here, guys, I want you to change this one first. For the losses, <coughs> The only thing I change this here is this. I'm going to multiply this by 1.25. That's all. So, to continue with the, the formula that I gave you guys, I used to multiply the 1 by 4 10. I think it's any other 25x, so for losses is good. So, here's the square foot of the building, the density multiplied by 1.25. This will accommodate for losses, losses in the system. And all over the system, so that's a factor. I know it said 10%, just multiply always 1.25. Um, this will the density, this is the area, <coughs> the density, the one per square foot, multiply by 1.25, divided by the power factor, and, um, and a thousand. Okay, so let's go do that. <coughs> so you come over here, my friends, and you're going to find 45 times. 45, right? And then you multiply this by a power density of uh, uh, 90, multiply this by 1.25, divide it by 48 <coughs> and 1,000, and that will be, if you get that, you come up with 285, 285 kVA. 285 kVA. So this is your 285 kVA. KVA. Nobody did the math, right? Uh, square foot. Then, if you take, so this is your step number one, my friend. Step number two is to take the 285 K, the 285, 285 KVA. To, when they put them in uh, the wall, we wrote them for me, it would be the sheet. Um, remember that sheet that I gave you guys? For me, I told you to write them, guys, in uh, the logs. I wrote them, anyway. I asked you guys to write them in 313, 3-13. Can you write yourself this in the sheet that I gave you, please? If you go there, the next standard um, from what I gave you is 300. Okay. Can uh, Andrew, do you know, can you write this other note? That's the sheet that you have coming for us, please. So you go there and find it. That's it. So I, I have 300 kV. My UPS system is going to be 300 kV. Now, uh, carry my friend, when you guys size your UPS, you're going to size it the same thing. You already have the same calculation. Come up with the size and size the horizon. Does that make sense? Because we're going to redline the horizon for you. At the beginning, we say, you're going to tell me, and now you should use this example to size it. Okay. Then the rest is history. Just finding the full load current and multiplying it by multiplying. We do not a whole lot. So then I start working with the standard. So I go down by 300. And so that's actual size. Overcompetition device is 300. 
PADA divide this by 147 really times the system is 480. So that will give you a healthy, if you do that, my friend, that will give you a healthy 361 amp. Okay? And then, of course, we need to uh, size the conductors for this. Then, I need to size the temperature device. Then you take 1.25 continuous load multiplied by 361, and that will get you uh, 422. Okay? And then from there, so 452, and from there, you will go up to the next standard, which is uh, 452, that will be 500. So my over temperature device is going to be 500. My over now, can, could I have made a 450? Do I have a 450? I think I have 450. Yeah, 450. Could I have made a 450 because of the two amps? Yes. For the test, could you please just make it the next standard? And do you need judgment? Could I have said, you know, for two amps, I'm not going to go up, I'm going to go down? Absolutely. 500. Cool. Continuous load. That will be a best of continuous load. Um, I can't think of it from the top of my head. If you go to article 210, or very second. No, not, not directly. Not directly. Well, there's actually one in computer room in the secret book. It says under engineering supervision. That's what you're looking at, under engineering supervision. Um, I can't remember, 645 or something. Why didn't you ask me this question when you do the lecture with you, Bill? That would make me, you make me curious. I know there's one in computer room. Okay. Okay, no. How about we just continue with that sizing? Because it's not a good point. Okay. 500 over temperature device. All right. Now, next. Conductors match over temperature device. You don't have to do anything. I have a 500 matching. I wouldn't have it anymore. So I take the 500 amp, cut it by two. That will get me 250. And you take it to the same thing like that, you do 315, V16, 75 degree column, and you will end up with two sets of uh, three conductors. Each one of them is uh, 250 ACM, THHN. Done. Here's the size of your feeder coming to the UPS. Mass over temperature device, done deal. Mass over temperature device. Okay. That's the over temperature device size. Right here. The over temperature device. The PDUs, guys, we have PDU 1 and 2. We, we said we size them the same because there's redundancy, right? So, and they said the same as the UPS sizing. I'm not going to repeat it. It's exactly the same. So, what was the size of the UPS? Same sheet, same thing. So, we came up with a size of uh, 300, right? You guys remember how? We came up with 300 KDA. Write to yourself, same size as UPS. So you have to in the good life, the same calculation, but you might be going to different sheets into slightly different size, but all calculations will be the same size. Cool? So we go next. Yes, no? So Andrew, my friend, there will be two of them. Each one of them is 300 kV. One of them is to grab on here. The other one will pick up the load. That's how they size them. No, under normal condition, each one of them will be carrying 150. But if one is uh, the electronics go nuts on you and it fails, instead of losing your system, you shift to the second one. 
That's how the UPS is going to be done. See, even the UPS in real life, there will be two UPSs here. So, who? Okay. Yeah. PDU, this is PDU1 and same size, redundancy, same as UPS size. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. PDU over temptation device. Now, for the PDU over temptation device, guys, I will remind you the PDU has a transformer inside it. It has a transformer inside it. So, what we need to do, my friends, is, um, is find, so the, uh, here's the reference because it has a transformer. Here's what we need to do. We need to take 2.5 and divide that maybe by uh, V61. That will give me, um, in this case, V61 will give me 903. Go down if it's not a standard, and the next standard, my friend, is 903.240.6. The next standard is 800 amps. 361 is the focal damp of the PDU. So we did the, from here, guys, you find I, same thing, coming up with 3K, divided by 1.73 times 480. That would be 361. 361. Okay? 361. That's what I just skipped this one because we did it before. So you take the 361 multiplied by 2.5 because it's a 450.3b. This is from 450.3b. The cable. Um, now get your 800 amps. 800 amps. Okay, so that's we got the 800 amps. Then the conductors, conductors are 1.25, same thing guys, multiplied by 361. You can have 4, 5, 2, um, so that's my amps, my, um, my conductor size, the conductor size, 4, 5, 2, divided by 2. That will get you 226, 226 amps. Take them to V10.15, V16. This is the table. If you guys go to there, it will be two sets of uh, two conductors, three con uh, in this case, three conductors for this. Four on A, W, G, T, H, H, N. I will emphasize, guys. So this is as high as you can get 800 amp, Jeff. But it's it's if you if the manufacturer of the equipment that's the max, that's the max. The manufacturer of the equipment might go size for 500 in the primary. Remember, we're sizing the max. So can I go lower than 800 amps? Absolutely. Can I go down to 500 amps? Absolutely. And just protect my cables. 452. Remember how we went up. And we put 500 amp here. Can I do that? Yes, absolutely. And that's typically what you, what the manufacturers will do, guys, because it's such a transformer to match the equipment. Uh, could you fry the conductors? Uh, no, because the conductors are protected on the secondary. This is the primary. The secondary is protecting them from overload too. So whatever comes from the primary has to be used in the secondary. So if you protect the secondary conductor with overload based on the ambicity, so if you are to overload the transformer, the secondary protection will trip open. And in, in, in this case, it will protect the primary, right? Because the current has to go through the primary to the secondary. If you have good protection in secondary, the primary is from overload, from overload. The primary is protected. That's kind of the idea. 
But I want to I want to warn you that in real life probably this will be much lower. But for the test, let's keep it this way, the max. I want to write the max. Max. Okay. So that's all we care for the test. All right, so we got these. That's it for this one, guys. Let's go directly into my um, second example. Any question here about the PDUs? That's how you can size your PDUs. Did they go too fast? No. The protection, if you want to size it, the reason why we don't size the protection, guys, is because it's, here's the PDU, guys, here's the uh, PDU, PDU, can you guys see the PDU, that's how the PDU is, it's a, it's a transformer, it's one transformer, one and one set of panels, that's what a PDU, in one box, Aaron, that's your PDU, so I don't size this, because it's part of my transformer sizing, you know what I mean, I don't size it. It's part of my transformer sizing. I only size this ahead of it and the look at the shell device. These two. Everything else is a unit. Box. All sized by the manufacturer. Now, if you want to size it, Aaron, what do you do? You will go to the secondary input. That's what this system here is 208. Everything here is 208, right? So you're going to go find the follow down to it, multiply by 1.25 and size the conductors and size the, the circuit paper. So we don't want to do that one. Okay, the last one here for the test is, <coughs> this would be, I should probably change this one to three here, and the one before, this will be my three. I moved them together this time. And this one was, um, we just said one, I'm going to change that one to one, if you don't mind me here, to two, okay, and then we'll go back into, I just don't want to see, you want to see. Okay, so now it's three, <laughs> thank you, I know I'm sorry, I did the four, I just started the wrong way. Okay, there you go. And that one is four. Thanks, one. That one is four. All right, so this is easy. Yeah, there you go. Industrial building. I have a receptacle load of 445 kPa. I need you to find the demand load and then size this. You are going to do the same calculation for the building. Same thing. I have a receptacle load of 444,000. I need to demand it and then size the system. What, what the size of the system means? I need to find the actual size of the transformer, delta Y, the over-reflection device on the primary, the secondary conductors, the se primary conductors, secondary conductors, over-reflection device on the secondary and the panel size. You guys remember how you have two panels here, one high voltage, one low voltage between them is a transformer. We need to size the feeder that goes to the transformer and the secondary that goes to the sub panel. So that's what we need to do. <clears throat> now, any comments, guys? I made a copy of this for you, right? Okay. So the first thing we need to do, I want to write this one in blue here, is find the demand. You guys remember the demand um, from which uh, table. <clears throat> 220.44. Uh, where am I going to put this one here? 220.44. Table 220.44. Here's what it tells you. It tells you, my friends, you take the 44k, the first thing k, they are saying here, don't touch them. I need to. If I ask you to find the demand, if I say demand load, you don't do it. If I say receptacle load, you have to find the demand. Um, so, 44 minus 10, and you cut this by 1, 0.5, and add it up. And if you do that, my friends, you will end up um, with 27. 27 A, B, and A. That's the first thing you do when you have a receptacle load, you demand it. 
because it's highly unlikely that all the receptacles therein are running at the same time. That's how they allow you to cut anything higher than 10 k. After new demand, yeah, you will start the sizing process. So now this is the number that we will be sizing for. That's my number that we will be sizing for. Okay, so let's go. Everybody understand what I did here? Now on the test, if I told you the demand load is, you don't have to do this step. If I said the receptacle load, then you have to demand it. Cool. May I? So next, we're going to go size based on this value: the transformer, the primary, secondary, overcapacitor device, and feeders and panel. Typical. All right, let's go do that. Okay, number one was uh, what was number one, Chad? Number one was we need the transformer size. The transformer size, right? That was uh, number one. Okay, so number one, my friend, is going to be the transformer size. So this is a piece of cake. You're going to take 27, 127, D, and K. Take this one to D below, page uh, 7 7, 7 7, and that will get you 30 K. Done deal. You guys have been there? Done deal, right? Piece of cake, no gimmicks, nothing. If it's not a standard, where do you go? Up. Next. So, oh, there you go. To the, yeah. So, you just size the transformer. That's really a piece of cake. Everybody? Brian? Thank you, my friend. Okay, transformer primary over temperature device. Now, number two is the over temperature device, the primary size. 440.3D will tell you. You have to find the I primary, I primary first, which is 30K divided by 1.7 times 480. Or therein, and Adam, you can find it from the table, by the way. You don't even have to do that. The table will tell you. It's 36 amps. 36 amps. Okay? That's step one. Step two, my friends, is you need to find uh, 2.5. That's from this table, 450.3 for, for feet. Multiply this one by 36. That will get you a healthy 90 amps. Okay? If it's not a standard, what do you do? You take the 90 amps to uh, 240.6. If it's not a standard, you go down and that will get you a 90 amps. It's a standard. Maximum. You go work from Shad Kudrasen and then chill with Chad Knucklehead. We're using 60 on this type of transformer. Is that wrong to put 60? No. Max. Can I put a max here, guys? Max. That's it. That's your maximum over temperature device. Primary conductor, guys, is the transformer primary conductor. Is that piece of kit? Here's my I primary is 36M. We just found this one, right? Then you're going to take this one and multiply it by 1.25 times 36. The reason why we multiply it because we're assuming that's kind of weird. Okay, we're assuming. It could be overloaded continuously. I found it hard because we already demanded it. So worst case scenario is assuming it's continuous load coming out of there. So at full load, and that will give me I didn't do this this step. Can somebody try to try how much? Thank you. Forty five amps. That's my amps. Okay. Then the last step, my friend, is to take the 45 amps and take them to me 10.15 D16, uh, 75 degree column, it was three phase equipment, and I need three conductors, uh, number uh, number six, can, can you, somebody, or number eight? Somebody go for me, please. With that, number eight can get it there. 
that one I need help. Uh, I think number eight would not be in here. It does? <laughs> But I'm the down in town, so uh, number eight will give me up to fifty. You're right. So I'm stick with number eight. Number eight. I wanna remind you, Kerry, my friend, does that? It gives you right? Yeah. Now I want to remind you if you go in the actual field, the field guys, and you find that they're using bigger than number eight, which typically they do, hold the job. But that's your minimum. You don't have to take the minimum. So that's your uh, number eight. Okay. Shall we move? Next, last one, last but not least. Okay, what happened to last but not least? There you go. Let me do that slide. Okay, panel size. Now we're going to go to my panel size, guys. And for the panel size, here's what I would do for the panel size. I would go 30K divided by 1.73, 1.73 times 208. Now remember, we move to the second year of the transport, but that will give me 80 PM, okay? Then, so that's, then I will up it 1.25 times 83. So I will up it, and I need somebody to do that for me. I did not do that. What's one? What's 83 times 1.25? 104. 104, okay. So 104M, then the last step is to take the 104M, so you want 3-12, 110. Do we have 110 panel? No, panel was three phase, remember. This is going to be 3-12, uh, three phase, 120, 125, right? 60, 150. 125. So this will be a 125 and 10. <clears throat> the 125 and 10. Who? That using 3 12. The wall 3 12. We're sizing the panel. Yes. Assuming it's continuous. Okay. Panel size, the overcap tension device, guys. The overcap tension device will do the same thing. The overcap tension device, 1.25 multiplied by 83 equal 104. The only difference is we take 104 squared, 24.6, and that will give me what's 110, X standard. 110. Now, would it be smart to put 125 since the panel is 125? Absolutely. So 110, but the code minimum is 110. You can go to 110, because that's what you're looking at, 110. Then, under my circuit breaker, or fuse is 110. Then, then I would take that 110M, guys, match over competition line, which is 110. We'll put 110 here, 110 M, and take it to 310 and that will get me, um, I have three number three. Can somebody check that? Because I have my numbers are different here. Uh, 310. So I, I, I need to match 110. What did you come up with? 110, number two, thank you. Number two is actually. So, how many conductors though? I'm going to write number two. A, W, G, T, H, H, N. How many conductors? 
Okay, we need three for the three phase. On the secondary side of a, a receptacle transformer, do you have a neutron that we use all the time? Now, since the panel is a baby one, 200 amp or less, remember how we said if it's 200, guys, up to 300 amp, full neutron, no question asked. <laughs> so, how many conductors do I need here? Four, thank you. Why four? Three phase and a neutral. Gentlemen, that's all I have. Any comments, any questions? I do, I need 10 minutes to go over the theory and then I'll let you guys go for the day. I mean, work here. I'm shocked my seven and eight. Okay. Yeah, I'm not taking it off, but.